Okay, good morning everyone. Today we'll continue on with what we started yesterday, finding the zeros of higher degree polynomials, degree greater than 2. Uh, today, however, we'll be looking at imaginary answers or complex numbers. And remember, a complex number or the imaginary number i is equal to the square root of negative 1. Okay, so we'll, be, we'll have a negative underneath the radical. So that's the only difference from yesterday's lesson. So here, let's take a look at an example one. So let's say here I have a polynomial fourth degree. I should be able to find four zeros. It's a fourth degree polynomial. And so I have x to the fourth minus 16. And I recognize that to be a difference of squares, okay? Even though x to the fourth is not x squared, okay, we can factor x to the fourth minus 16 as a difference of squares. So x to the fourth minus 16, I can factor as x squared minus 4 times x squared plus 4. Okay. And then I can, can, I can factor that again. So x squared minus 4, I can factor again as a difference of squares. So that would be x minus 2 times x plus 2. So my zeros will be 2 and negative 2. And then the other factor, x squared plus 4, I can't factor that. I can, however, just solve for x. So I have x squared plus 4, and then I set that equal to 0, defined as zeros. I subtract 4, I get x squared is equal to negative 4. And then I take the square root of both sides, and I get x is equal to plus or minus 2i. So again, just to recall, the square root of negative 4 is equal to the square root of 4 times the square root of negative 1, which is just 2i. Okay, so I found all four zeros. I had a fourth degree polynomial. I should find four zeros. Although two of them are real and two of them are imaginary. So I see my zeros there. Now if I went out to Desmos, I would only see the real zeros 2 and negative 2, I would not see the imaginary zeros. Remember, they never cross the x-axis. So if I go out to Desmos, I do see my real zeros, negative 2 and 2, but I don't see the other zeros, the imaginary zeros. You never will, because they'll never cross the x-axis. But nonetheless, I found all four zeros, plus or minus 2 and plus or minus 2i. If I have a fourth degree polynomial, I should be able to find four zeros. Some of them may repeat, however, but I should be able to find four zeros. So that's first example. Let's look at another example here. Oh, and on the test x to the fourth minus 16, you should be able to factor that. I mean, I would expect you to be able to factor that. Okay. Let's take a look at example number 2, 2x cubed minus 11x squared plus 16x minus 3. Okay, so I can't factor by grouping. I never will be able to factor that by grouping. It is not a trinomial. I can't factor it as a trinomial. It's not a difference of squares. So in this case, I'll just use decimals. I'll use decimals to help me find the other zeros. So using Desmos, a 0 is 3. So again, let me go back So uh, to Desmos. I'm going to hide this graph in this graph here. So there's, so there's that function error. So I see a 0 here. That's probably a fraction or a irrational, you know, something with a square root. Again, some, probably a fraction or something with a square root. But here I see a 0. 3. So I can work with that in synthetic division. So there's my 3. So there's my 3. Oops. There's my 0. And then I write the coefficients of the polynomial 2, negative 11, 16, and negative 3. And then I do synthetic division. Okay, when I do synthetic division, I get 2, negative 5, and 1. And so I start with 2x cubed my degree will be 1 less, so my quotient will be 2x squared minus 5x plus 1 equals 0. Now, if I could factor that, I would factor it. I can't. If I could complete, if it was easy to complete the square, I would complete the square. It's not easy. The leading coefficient here is 2 rather than 1, 
and besides the b term is negative 5 as odd is not even so I would not use complete the square so the only thing left to do is to use a quadratic formula okay so with a2 b equals negative 5 and c is equal to 1 when I use a quadratic formula I would get 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 minus 8 over 4 or 5 plus or minus the square root of 17 over 4. Okay, so I start with a um, third degree polynomial, a cubic polynomial, and I found all three zeros. One zero I found using decimals, so one zero was three. The other zero is 5 plus root 17 over 4, and then 5 minus root 17 over 4. But nonetheless, I found all three zeros. And in fact, if I were to take 5 plus the square root of 17 over 4, I would be able to verify that. And so that probably would be that value there, 2.281. And then if I were to take 5 minus the square root of 17 over 4, that value would probably be 2.219. Okay, so nonetheless, I was able to verify all three zeros using decimals. I didn't have any imaginary answers. So that's example number two. Let's look at example number three. Here again, I have x to the fourth plus 4x cubed minus 8x squared minus 8x. It's a fourth degree polynomial. I should be able to find four zeros, okay? Some of them may be real, some of them may be imaginary. Okay. So, let's see here. I can't factor by grouping here. That would be difficult. Let me see. It would not be able to factor by grouping. It's not a difference of squares. It's not a trinomial. So what I do is I'll use decimals to help me find a zero. So I can begin synthetic division. So let me go out to decimals. And then where is my, where's the decimals at? Okay, there we go. That was strange. So, so here's that polynomial x to the fourth plus 4x cubed minus 8x squared minus 8x. Now, when I see, look at decimals, here's a zero there, negative 0.764. Here's another zero there, zero. And there's another zero there, two. So, I have two possibilities that I can use in synthetic division, but actually I only really have one. Because I would not be able to use a zero, zero in synthetic division. I would not get anywhere, so I'll use two. Okay, so the zeros I had were zero and two, but I would not be able to use zero. I mean, think about it, if I had zero here, I wouldn't get anywhere. I'd always multiply by zero. I just wouldn't get anywhere. Okay, so I'll just use two. I can only use two for synthetic division. All right, so when I use synthetic division, I start it with a fourth degree polynomial. So my quotient should be one degree less. So I have one, six, four, zero. Oh, and notice here that I don't have a constant term. I don't have a constant term. I have x to the fourth, x to the third, x to the second, x to the first. I don't have x to the zero, so I have to add a zero there. My coefficients are one, four, negative eight, negative eight, and zero. But when I do synthetic division here, what I get left over is x cubed plus six x squared plus four x. Okay, I have to find the other zeros here. So first I'll factor out an x. So I get x times x squared plus 6x plus 4 equals 0. Well, for the factor x, the 0 is 0. That I saw on Desmos. Okay, I saw that 0 there, right there. So 1, 0, another 0, 0. But now I have x squared plus 6x plus 4 as my other factor, and I need to find the zeros of that quadratic chapter 5 stuff now 
So I either have two choices. I can't factor that. There's no factor of four that adds up to six. I could use a quadratic formula or I can complete the square. Because the leading coefficient here is one and my B term is even, I just find completing the square much easier to do. So I, add, so I subtract four from both sides. I get x squared plus six x equals negative four. I take six divided by three and squared. So I add nine to both sides. Six divided by two is three and three squared is nine. So I add nine to both sides. So x squared plus six x plus nine is a perfect square trinomial whose sides are x plus three. So I have x plus three squared is equal to five. And again, if it helps you to complete the square, I would do so. So if it helps you to see the picture, x, so we were working with this here, right? So x times x, there's my x squared. I take six divided by two, and that's three. So three and three. And then when I complete the square, I'll add nine. So this is my three x. And there's my 3x, there's my 6x, so that's what I started with. So I have x squared plus 6x plus 9, whose sides? So, that, so that's the area of that square, but the sides are x plus 3 times x plus 3 squared. So x plus 3 squared equals 5. And if I take the square root of both sides, take the square root of both sides, I get x plus 3 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 5. Okay, and then I subtract 3 and I get x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 5. So notice here I had a fourth degree polynomial. I should be able to find all four zeros. So that one I saw in decimals. I also saw the other zero in decimals, but it's expected that you would be able to show me how you got that other zero on the test. You can only use one zero from decimals. The other zeros you have to show your work deriving. And I did. So one zero zero and then the other zeros are negative three plus root five and negative three minus root five. And I could go out to decimals and I'd be able to see so there's I'd be able to see Okay, so let's see here. Yep, um, so I see all four zeros. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Right. So zero to negative three plus or minus the square root of five. Fourth degree polynomial, I should be able to find four zeros. All right, and then the last one here. So here again, I have x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x plus 2. I would not be able to factor by grouping. It's not a difference of squares. It's, I can't factor it as a trinomial. So what I do is I just use decimals to find a zero to get started. So when I go out to decimals here, if I graph that, so here I see just one zero, and that's negative two. Okay, so that's what I'll use. Okay, so let's see here my coefficients for that polynomial, that fourth degree polynomial are one, three, three, and two. And so when I use synthetic division, I get one, one, and one. And so I started with a third degree polynomial. I reduced the degree by one, so my answer should be x squared plus x plus one equals zero. Okay, so it's a quadratic. Back to chapter 5 stuff now. Okay, there's no factor of 1 that adds up to 1. Um, completing a square would be difficult because the b term here, 1, is not even. So I just use the quadratic formula. So I get x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times 1 all over 2 times 1. And so I get negative 1 in the end, plus or minus the square root of negative 3 over 2. But the square root of negative 3 is I root 3. So my final answer is negative 1 plus or minus I root 3 over 2. 
So I found my two zeros here that complex zeros, imaginary, or complex numbers. And then the other zero I found using decimal, so negative two. So it was a third degree polynomial. I should find three zeros. Some of them may be complex. So negative two and a negative one plus or minus I root three over two. And notice that, you, again, these imaginary roots, the imaginary roots, they never cross the x-axis. All right, so it's the only real root I have. Okay, so again, so this, this lesson is just a follow-up from yesterday, but it's really no different other than the fact that now we just have imaginary answers, complex numbers. Okay, we have complex numbers in our answers there.